Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Ready on to part two of our 5.2.6 lesson on compound events. We uh, learned that there is a new way of creating probability tables, probability models, uh, to find probability when we have compound events and when we have some more complicated examples of compound compounding events. So let's move on to our next situation. Here's the situation uh, at the pet store. The pet store sells a lot of pet food. On a slow day at the pet store, three people buy cat food, two people buy dog food, and one person buys food for their pet. Pet snake, I should say. If half the customers pay with cash and half pay with credit card, what's the probability that a customer will uh, buy pet food? No, I'm sorry. What is the probability that a customer buying pet food will buy dog food with cash? Okay, so Edwin sets up this probability model that you see right here to help us find the probability. Now we've got two events here. One event is the choice of, of pet food. The other event is how they're going to pay for it. So what I would like for you to do is see if you can come up with all of the various probabilities based on this model that we have here. Now, we do have three different types of cat food, right? So the probability of just randomly picking a, let's say we got all these bags all stacked up, right? And you're gonna randomly pick bags. Uh, if three of them are cat food, two of them are dog food, and one of them uh, is snake food, then you've got a three, six probability or one half probability, 50% chance of grabbing cat food. There are two of them that are dog food out of the six possibilities, so that would be a one third probability and then only one snake food, so that would be one out of the six. That's why we've got these individual probabilities there. You're either going to pay cash or you're going to pay for credit cards. So you got a 50-50 chance of paying either one. So go ahead and, uh, and see if you can figure out what all those individual probabilities are. I'm going to pause, you pause as well, and see if you can fill in all of these descriptions and probabilities of each one of these uh, combinations. Okay. Hopefully you paused and uh, we haven't revealed too much. If you are not ready, please pause because I'm going to start doing some reveals and then unpause when you're ready to hear the responses. All right, so I started off, I really like the trees a lot, in case you haven't noticed. Um, and even though we've only got two events and it could be uh, shown in a table, um, here it's pretty easy to show it as a, as a tree. And so you could have cash with the cat food, and you got three instances with cash and cat food. You got two instances of cat with dog food, and one instance with cash. Did I say cat? I mean cash with cat food, cash with dog food, cash with snakes. And then you got credit card purchases. Three instances where you've got cat credit card with cats uh, food, two instances of credit card paying for dog food, and one instance of a credit card paying for snake food. So if we're gonna find the probability of buying dog food with cash, it looks like you've got one, two of those out of a possible one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So two out of twelve, the probability of paying for cash and also buying dog food should be two out of twelve or one out of six. So let's see if that's what we get here. So if you've got a one half probability of paying a cat food and a one half probability of paying cash, one half times one half means you've got a one fourth probability of paying cash for cat food. You've got a one sixth probability, and I highlighted this because that's the one that we're focusing on, one sixth probability of paying cash for dog food and one twelfth probability of paying cash for snake food. If you were using a credit card, you would have a one fourth probability of paying for cat food with a credit card. Sorry, I got a little hiccupy burp happening there. You didn't hear the burp part, so that's good. Um, you've got a one third times one half. You've also got a one sixth probability of buying dog food with credit card. And then credit card with a snake would be one twelfth. 
So using this probability table model, using the multiplication, gave us the same result as if we were using the probability tree. So that's good. Our, our results agree with each other. So we can declare that it's definitely a 1-6 probability of paying cash for dog food in this situation. All right, now we've got kind of a weird problem here, and I was debating whether or not to do this problem with you on video, because in class, it's actually kind of a fun little activity that we do. Let me read it through, and I'll explain. Uh, I'm going to do the reveal, and I'll explain what happens in class and what happens here on the video and how it's different. Your team is going to play against your teacher in a game with two hidden spinners. Spinner A has the numbers 2, 3, and 4 on it, and spinner B has the numbers 6, 7, and 8 on it. The rules are this. We're going to spin each spinner, then we're going to add the results. If the sum is even, one team gets a point. If the sum is odd, the other team gets a point, and the first team to earn 10 points would win the game. Okay? So... What we do, and this is a hidden spinner, right? You're not able to see the spinners. And so I would turn off my television so I would only see this on my computer screen and none of you would be able to see it in the classroom. And we would go and actually play the game. But first, we would have students uh, choose whether they want to be odd or even. And so it would be good to think about all the possible sum combinations of the numbers 2, 3, and 4 when added to numbers 6, 7, and 8. So what I would like for you to do right now is actually set up this table, and we are going to add those together. So go ahead, set up this table, and then write in all those individual sums. Determine which ones are odd, which ones are even, and then declare what you think would be the better choice for your team to win. Should your team choose even numbers for sums, or should your team choose odd numbers? for sums. Go ahead and uh, finish that and then we'll do the reveal and then uh, we'll move on. All right, these are the results, those are the sums, and I've color-coded all the evens are highlighted in yellow, all the odds are highlighted in green. So, seems pretty clear, right? If you are earning a point, if the sum of the, two, of the results or the sum of the two events is an even number, and you've got a higher likelihood of getting an even number because it looks like it's five ninths is your is your uh, probability of getting an even number. Then you should go with even numbers, right? There's five even uh, sums and four um, four odd sums. So that means that you've got a higher likelihood, a five ninths probability of getting an even compared to getting an odd. So if you were going to bet on this you probably go with whatever has the higher probability, right? All right. Now, now that you have, oh, we, we haven't played the game. We weren't able to play the game because it's not going to work. If you see me, uh, if you're watching the video, um, you're seeing the results of it. So we're just going to skip the game, and we're just going to talk about the theory here. Um, let me go ahead and do a reveal of what the spinners look like. Okay, so this is what happens when we play the game. Students believe, based on the probability model that we just created, that it's more likely to get an even sum than it is to get an odd sum, except you were tricked. This was not, this is the way you expect the uh, spinners to look, where each one of the numbers represented, the six, seven, and eight, are all equally likely to la be landed upon with the spinner. But that's not what the directions said. The directions just said that the spinners had the numbers 2, 3, and 4, and the other one had the numbers 6, 7, and 8. Turns out that there's a disproportionate number of 3s on this first pair, which changes the probabilities. Okay, so now that you've seen the spinner, do you think that you made the right choice? And the answer is no. Numbers aren't represented equally, so this particular model that we used here does not apply. It is not appropriate because you don't have an equally likely chance of getting the two, the three, and the four. It turns out you've got a one-eighth probability of getting the two and a one-eighth probability of getting the four, and you got a six-eighth probability of getting the three. 
that's going to affect all of these other probabilities. So what assumption about the spinners did you make? Well, we said it already, that there would be an equal number um, of each of the numbers so that each number would be represented once. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create one of those probability tables where we incorporate uh, the probability of getting a 2, a 3, and a 4 in the first event and the probability of getting a 6, 7, and 8 in the second event in the second spin. So what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to fill out this table, okay? I want you to start by creating uh, nine sections in that rectangle and label this one as, as if you got a uh, two on the first spin, this you got a three on the first spin, this you got a four on the first spin. And then here will be part B, the spinner B would be a six on the first on one spin, a seven on one spin, or an eight in one spin. Fill that in first, and then let's uh, figure out what our probabilities of each one are. Okay, so go ahead and pause for a second to fill that in, and then unpause, and then we'll reveal these, and then we'll pause again, and then we'll identify what all the probabilities are. Okay, so since this spinner here, is this a spinner there? No, it's a spinner right here, a spinner right here. Since uh, spinner B has a one-third chance of each one of those numbers showing up, once you spin, we're going to say that the 6, the 7, and the 8 all have the same probability of one-third. But in spinner A, remember, only one of the 8 was a 2, and only one of the 8 was a 4, and all the rest of them were threes, and so six out of eight is the same as three out of four, so I've simplified this particular fraction. So all the fractions are in simplest form. So now we're going to take for the number eight, for the number nine, for the number ten, all those sums. Please find the sums of each one of these and write down what the probability is of getting each one of those sums. Okay, so remember, six and two makes eight, six and three makes nine, six and four makes ten. Go ahead and pause again and fill in all those sums and also calculate through multiplication what each of those probabilities are. All right, so the probability of getting a 2 and a 6 to form a sum of 10 or of 8 is a 1 24th probability. So it's 1 third times 1 eighth is 1 out of 24. The probability of getting a 9 because you spun a 3 and a 6 would be 3 fourths times one-third, which is three-twelfths, which I would simplify down to one-fourth, but I didn't simplify that completely because we're going to be doing some adding of things together in a second. Um, but actually, you know what? I probably should just call that one-fourth, don't you think? Shouldn't we always express it as a fraction? Let's go ahead and do that, or as the simplest fraction. So let's call that one-fourth. And then one third times one eighth, once again, is one twenty fourth. So getting a six and a four is a one out of twenty four probability. Getting a two and a seven for a sum of nine was one twenty fourth. Getting a, a ten in this situation also ended up being one fourth. Hold on for a second. Let me do a little fixer. Come on, give me a bigger eraser, please. Okay. So three twelfths, once again, is the same as one fourth. And then this one was going to be 124th, and then this one going to be 124th, and this one is going to be... Oh, I should have checked this before I did it. There we go. That's much, much better. Okay. And then 124th. So now let's highlight. I believe we had all the even numbers were highlighted in yellow. And all the odd numbers were highlighted in green. So, in order to figure out which one has the higher probability, we've got to add together all of these fractions. We've got to add together 1 24th plus 1 24th plus 1 24th plus 1 24th plus 1 4th. And then we're going to add up all the green ones, 1 4th plus 1 4th plus 1 24th plus 1 24th. Go ahead and add up all the yellow fractions, getting common denominators, and then add together all of the, uh, of the green, and then see which one has the higher prior, uh, prop, uh, probability. 
the yellows, which coincide with the even numbers, or the green, which coincide with the odd numbers. Okay. This will be the last thing that we do. All right. I, when I just gave a little peek underneath these boxes, I realized I did it slightly differently, but it doesn't matter because your end result should match my end result. How we get there, we can take different paths to get there. What I actually did was I decided to uh, add up all, come on. There you go. I decided to add up all of the sums that were eight. There was only one of them, which is 124. All of the nines added up to the total of 7 24 since this is 6 24 plus 1 24th is 7 24 adding up all the tens tens together would be 1 24th plus 1 24th plus 6 is total of 8 24 all the 11s was this is 6 24 and that is 1 24 so that would be 7 24 and all the 12s there's only one of them is 1 24 so now when we take and add together all the evens This would be 8, 9, 10, 24 which is the same as 5 twelfths, which is the same as a 41.6% chance of getting an even number. Okay, then we add up all the odds. And so we're going to add 7 24 7 24 and that's going to give us 14 24 which is the same as 7 twelfths, which is the same as 58.3 repeated percent. So by looking at this, we are able to draw the conclusion that according to this, so where are they? Where are you? Oh, they're on the right. There you go. According to these spinners, to play the game, the team that is most likely to win is going to be the team that chooses the odd sums because the probability says that uh, you have a much higher likelihood, 58% chance of getting an odd sum than an even sum, which was closer to 41, 42%. And I believe that is the end of our lesson. So let's go ahead and uh, complete our homework. And there might be a check for understanding to this. I'm not quite sure yet. So we're definitely going to start uh, heading toward a study guide and a chapter one, uh, chapter five, test number one that's going to be happening within the next few days. All right, take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, feeling good.